Hello YouTube, this is Remington H, KG5RJS. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to tune up or load a vacuum tube amplifier, in particular, an Ameritron AL8011. The AL8011 uses three of these 8011A vacuum tubes. This particular tube came out of my AL8011 because it has a cracked anode plate. The cracked anode plate may have been caused by poor manufacturing or manufacturing defects. It probably wasn't helped by me mistuning the amplifier. And I'm going to explain how and why I mistuned it, particularly when operating on digital modes. I primarily have been running the amplifier on WSJTX modes, FT8 and FT4. And I output usually around 150 watts, uh, sometimes 200 watts, and on occasion 250 watts. I'm going to explain why if you follow the instructions from Ameritron, you could end up damaging the tubes in your amplifier or other components in the amplifier if you're not careful when tuning with the intention of then operating at relatively low power output relative to the 600 watts of peak envelope power the amplifier is capable of. So stay tuned for that. If you want to skip my explanation and go right into the demonstration of tuning the AL8011. Uh, I'll put a timestamp in the video so you can skip ahead. Okay, this is MFJ's instructions, user guide, user manual for the AL8011. And they tell you to increase the drive until full exciter power never to exceed 100 watts or 200 milliamps of plate current is achieved and quickly adjust the plate and load controls for maximum output power. That's all fine, but note maximum output power. Then they go on to talk about the load control, which is very important. Reducing the load control clockwise reduces grid current. That means reducing the capacitance. Now that means the load control. Zero is maximum capacitance, and 10 is minimum capacitance. They specifically talk about the load control if set at too low a numerical rating, puts severe stress on tank components. So they really are trying to warn you to not set the load control at too low a numerical rating or more meshed than it needs to be. W8JI provides a tuning supplement, supplemental tuning instructions. His instructions are a simpler version of what MFJ provides to tune the amplifier, and he provides more conservative maximum allowable grid and plate current. In these instructions, he very specifically says, the goal is always to tune and load for maximum possible power output. Do not retune at a lower power except in very special cases. These special cases would include RTTY or FM operation. I couldn't really find anywhere else on the site that he expands on these special cases. So far, we've learned that we should tune the amplifier for essentially maximum power output. And we should avoid at all costs operating the amp undercoupled or with the load capacitor too far meshed or set at too low of a numerical value. If you undercouple the amp, bad things happen very quickly potentially instantaneously. Overcoupling the amp, while potentially hard on the tubes, doesn't damage so instantaneously. And by overcoupling, we mean advancing the loading control clockwise to provide less capacitance. And as a final adjustment, he tells us to advance the load control to a higher numerical rating ever so slightly to produce a cleaner signal. There's an interesting section here about amplifiers without enough loading capacitance. And in particular is this paragraph. It says, as power is decreased, the maximum power output loading capacitance always increases. So if you tune the output at 500 watts, you're going to have a certain amount of loading capacitance necessary for that. However, if the maximum output power decreases, the maximum loading capacitance needed also increases, which means as you reduce output power, reduce drive to the amplifier, in order to maintain tuning, you need to increase the capacitance 
and set the load control at a lower numerical setting. So with all that, I think you can understand why there can be some confusion for someone who's relatively new using an amplifier, especially a tube amplifier. I also want to very quickly explain how I have everything set up here because I wasn't clear in my last video. So I have the IC7300 connected to the MFJ929 IntelliTuner automatic matcher. So the MFJ IntelliTuner shows me how much power output the transceiver, the IC7300, is sending to the amplifier. And it also shows me the SWR and corrects the SWR between the IC7300 and the amplifier. The IntelliTuner 2 is then connected directly to the Maritron's input. The RF out of the amplifier goes into this MFJ891. So the MFJ891 shows me exactly what the amplifier is seeing. The MFJ891 is then connected to the VersaTuner 2. And the VersaTuner 2 finally is connected to the antenna feed line. Okay, sorry about the angle. This is kind of the best I can do. I'm going to go ahead and just follow W8JI's easiest possible tuning steps using a closed CW key. FM push to talk or AM push to talk tuning. I'm just going to go ahead and use the IC7300's capability of sending CW using the microphone. So I'm going to set the transceiver's power to 10 to 20 watts. I'm going to go ahead and do 10. Preset plate load and band according to the presets listed in the manual. You almost want to have a checklist when you do this. Now I'm, I'm connected to a dummy load, a 1500 watt dummy load. Well first I'm going to go ahead and make sure the band is set appropriately on the amplifier. I have the IC7300 set at 14.072 megahertz. RF power is 10 watts. The amplifier is in standby mode. I'm going to check first that the SWR looks okay and that the transceiver is outputting approximately 10 watts. So for that, I'm going to leave the amp in standby mode. And now I'm going to preset the plate and load according to the MFJ Ameritron instruction manual for the amplifier. So they say for 14 megahertz, you should put the plate at eight and a half, which I'm doing now, and load control at four and a half. Okay, pretty close. Now I know actually approximately where I need those, those controls to be to load up the amplifier, but I'm gonna do this as if I've never done it before. I'm gonna go ahead and first set the transceiver to CW mode, and I'll turn the volume up. Amplifier in standby, and I'm going to transmit a carrier at 10 watts, or 10% RF power. I'll go ahead and put this, if you can see it, at, in the 20 watt range. Okay, and transmitting. Yeah, about 10 watts, give or take. 929 IntelliTuner says I'm putting out 11 watts. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put the, the amplifier in operate mode, and I'm going to transmit and quickly adjust plate control for maximum RF power output. I am not going to adjust the load control. Limit to five seconds on, 15 seconds, no transmit, cool off, standby. Okay, here we go. Probably easiest to, watch the 891, the big meter at the top. Actually, I need to put that in 200 watt mode. Give it a few seconds. I'm gonna forward or cut the video between my 15 second cooldown so you don't have to wait for that. Give it a second. Actually, 15 seconds. 15 seconds I think is very conservative conservative considering we're only putting out 10 watts of drive, but I'm gonna go ahead and follow that recommendation. Okay, we're about 20 seconds later. I'm gonna double check the plate again. Okay. That is maximum power output. Now on standby, 
so the amplifier is bypassed, I'm going to increase the transceiver's power output to 60 watts. I'm actually going to do 50, because I know that's what's required. Transceiver is at 50%. Let me check the power output in standby. Yeah, about 51 watts. I'm going to go ahead and put this to the 2000 watt mode because it's over 200. Now I'm going to adjust the load very quickly for maximum RF power. This you must do quickly. If you get in trouble, five seconds passes, stop, wait 15 seconds and do it again. Don't keep trying. Okay. Now, after 15 seconds of cooldown, we're gonna check the plate one more time to ensure it's at maximum power output. Okay, 15 seconds has passed. This transmit is gonna be less than five seconds. Down dip's gonna change. Actually did change a little bit. According to the 891, I'm putting out about a little over 500 watts of CW. That's with 51 watts of drive roughly. Load control is just over 3, looks like 3.1 on the scale, or whatever that those delineations are, and plate is just under 9. So according to W8JI, you should advance this about half in increment there, and you're good. So now you're ready to transmit SSB full output power. So again, I've got 3.1 or whatever that is. There's three smaller lines. So about three and a half, three and a third on the load control. Now what I was doing was dropping the output, the RF power from the transmitter down to about 25, 26, 27%, and then doing digital. However, this amp is out of tune for that power output. So we're gonna retune it. I'm gonna go through this again, but I'm gonna retune it for roughly 300 watts. I'm going to drive it with enough drive once the amp is tuned to put out about 300 give or take watts of power. Might be less than that, might be more. These, these meters aren't entirely accurate. So I'm going to go ahead and put the amp back in standby. I'm going to drop it to 10%. I'm just going to go through it again. Four and a half load. I'm going to leave the plate because I know that's that's where it needs to be and there's no sense in stringing the app adjusting the plate when I don't need to. So anyway, I'm going to adjust the plate at 10 watts, put it in off mode, key down carrier, transmit, and we're going to adjust for maximum RF power. Okay, wait 15 seconds. If I didn't know any better, I would assume if I want 250 watts, I'm gonna try 25% RF out on the IC7300, and that's what we're gonna tune up for. So I'm gonna turn the RF power up to 25%. Transceivers in operate mode, and I'm going to adjust the load control until I see maximum RF out. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in 2000 mode just in case it's outputs more than 200 watts. Okay, I'm seeing full power there. And the loading control is just over two. And we're putting out about 325. Actually, it looks like about 350 watts. So there you have it. That is now appropriately tuned for digital modes. I'd probably drop the power down 24%, 23%, and that gives me about 200 watts of output, give or take, for digital modes. When in this configuration, in this tune, the anode plates on the 811s, you can hardly see any red glow at all. I mean, maybe ever just so slight blush, but barely perceptible. Whereas when I was putting out about 150, 175 watts, 
improperly tuned, they got not red hot, but they were definitely brighter. The plates, anodes were glowing, even at less power output. Okay, YouTube, so in closing, if you're gonna be transmitting at or near full output power of your amp, especially on SSB, then go ahead and tune it according to the instructions. Tune the load and plate for maximum RF power output. And then increase the load by about a half a mark for slight overcoupling to clean up your signal. If you're gonna be operating the amp at say two or 300 watts, give or take, uh, then you wanna tune it to that point. Maybe tune it a little higher wattage and then when you drop the power, the drive power down to where you actually want to operate it, your amplifier will naturally be slightly overcoupled. Because when you tune at a slightly higher power, your load control is going to be a little higher numerical value than it would be had you tuned it for exactly the power output you're going to be transmitting. If you do that, you might be able to save your uh, 811A tubes. Now that I'm tuning the amplifier properly, and as I've been operating it on digital modes at 200 to 250 watts and seeing how little the plates glow at that power output, I'm now much more comfortable with the 811A tubes. I think 811A tubes have received kind of a bad rap, especially these current models, current ones we're getting from China with the stamped and folded uh, plate anodes. Uh, apparently they're not as robust as RCA used to make them 50 years ago or whatever, but now that I see it operating properly tuned, I, I think they'll last a long time and I'm not really concerned about uh, their longevity. I'm not as interested in replacing the 811As with 572Bs, something that you can do. Uh, 572Bs can handle a lot more plate dissipation and uh, I see no reason to spend the $250, $300 it would take to retube the amp with 572 Bs. YouTube, I hope this was helpful, and if you have any questions, comments, please uh, leave them down below. Thank you. 7-3.